everybody. Uh, yeah, this is part two of my um, micro drill press which I'm making from an old microscope. Um, I've already done part one, the introduction, and I will bought this microscope off a flea market. Uh, and I'm proposing, I was proposing to um, make it into a micro drill press. Um, I hadn't got no clear idea at, at that time of what I was how I was going to do it, but I've had time to think about it now, and so uh, I'm going to set to and make a start. Now, just to give you an idea of scale, this microscope measures um, approximately 8 inches tall, just under. Um, and just to give you an idea of scale, <clears throat> here's a standard spray can that you can buy, and it's smaller than a spray can. So that's just an idea of scale. So what I've done for part two, while I was thinking about it, I made a bit of a sketch and uh, <clears throat> made some rough outlines of ideas of how I'm going to do it. So basically, I'm going to buy a, a micro chuck of an appropriate size. I'm going to put make some bearing housings for top and bottom of the uh, microscope body uh, the housing uh, put some small roller bearings in each end when I've made the housings for them uh, put a bearing no sorry put a motor housing at the top with a motor in for a direct drive make a, a conventional drilling machine handle like that. Um, make a new table, which is which I'll probably make out of aluminium, uh, and then put the appropriate switching mechanism on and all the appropriate wiring. So basically, that's a rough outline of how I'm going to go about it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, to start with, then. We'll, we'll do this logically and I'll start with the bottom uh, the bottom bearing housing. I think that's the best place to start. Not only that, because I've already done it. <laughs> I made a start before I started filming this and what I've done, I've made an aluminium uh, housing for a small roller bearing. That size. I'll tell you its size in a minute. So if you look at this sketch, which I've made, um, this is the top housing that I've made out of some, some stock aluminium bar. And I've made it to these dimensions to accept a half inch OD roller bearing by 3 16 ID by 532 long which is one of these. So I'll have one of them at the bottom and one at the top. But the bit, the housing at the top is slightly different, well, a lot different to the bottom one. So that's my sketch for my bearing housing. And here it is fitted into the microscope. So I've, I've fitted it into the, uh, to the main barrel of the um, head of the microscope or micro drill which it will be now be and I've pressed the bearing in as you can see here at the bottom and uh, so now we can go on to the top bearing housing and what I've decided here for this top one is to combine a bearing housing with a motor housing and here's my sketch for it so basically what I'm going to do the the I'm going to use a bit of stock aluminium, inch and a half diameter, and I'm going to turn this housing to accept the bearing which will be here, and also incorporate an housing for the motor which is here. So the motor will fit into that bit, and then this piece fits into the body of the microscope head. Um, and then this space here is for, when I get my screwdriver, I'll make an access hole just here, 
so I can get a grub screw to attach the motor to the spindle when it's done. So uh, that's my sketch anyway of what I'm, what I'm doing. So that's going to be the next step, the, um, the top housing. Right, now I should have mentioned this before, I'm not showing you me turning and making the actual items because it's not meant to be a, a lathe exercise or a milling exercise or a drilling exercise. There's plenty of YouTube videos to tell you that. So if you're not genned up on, on actually how to use machinery, I suggest you take a look at some other videos first. But, um, yeah, so, but if, you, if you're already a machinist, that's all well and good. So, my next step will be to do the uh, upper bearing housing. <coughs> Right, I've been on my Marford lathe then, and I've made this other top housing. Um, it's just a longer version of the bottom housing and a bit bigger diameter on the OD. And what happens is, I've pressed the bearing into this, to this housing, like I did for the bottom one. And then this slots, no it doesn't slot, it's a nice tight fit into the, into the microscope head. And then this top diameter, that's where my uh, motor will fit and just briefly I'll show you how the motor fits and then we'll, we'll, we'll deal with motor in a, a, bit, a bit later on. So the motor is going to fit into this top housing like so and then my spindle is going to come through and connect through this access hole here. So we'll come on to motor in a, in a short while. So logically now th the next step is to do the spindle. So I'll show you a sketch of the spindle and then we'll do the spindle. Right then, so here's my spindle sketch and I'm making this spindle out of some stock 3 8 diameter stainless steel bar. That's just the off cut that's left. And on this spindle, it'll have 40 teeth per inch on the outside by 932 diameter. And then it'll have a spigot on to go up to the bottom bearing. And then the rest of the shaft is 3 16 which is 0.187 diameter, to um, be a nice fit into the bearings, bottom and top. Then on the end, I've put a 2BA thread, so I can put a 2BA nylock locking nut to captivate the spindle into the head like so and then there's a hole drilled in the end of the spindle to accept the motor which is 1 8 diameter by 12 deep and then not shown on this drawing I shall be drilling and tapping a little hole 10 BA diameter to go halfway through the shaft to captivate the motor spindle to this spindle. So I'm going to go to Marford Lane now and make this spindle. Right then, spindle made, all looking good. So I've got my thread on end, I've got my, um, my spigot here and I've put two flats on that spigot to accept a spanner. That's my bearing size, then my thread on end for the nut hole drill for my motor and a 10BA tap hole halfway through the, sh the spindle. Uh, it's important if you're making one of these it's got to be accurate and it's got to be concentric so I made that all in one uh, setting on my lathe and just had to turn it round to put this thread on end and drill that hole. So it's all concentric and all um, within, well, quarter of an hour really. Now then, what I'm putting on end then is this chuck which I got off the of internet and I think it cost me £4. It's a three jaw self-centering chuck and it's compatible to a Dremel tool. And it's a self-centering chuck. So this, this end I have made on here replicates the stub axle of a Dremel machine. 
So this Dremel choke now fits onto the end of this. A bit difficult to do looking through the camera, but we're there. Right, so as I tighten this chuck up onto this stub axle, it centres me jaws automatically like that. That's why I've put this spanner flat on for a spanner on my spindle, so I can hold the spindle while I tighten the chuck. And it's a really well made chuck that. Yeah, I'm really impressed with that for, for money. So that's my spindle done. So next step is to fit the spindle into the uh, into the new bearing housings. Right, so if all goes to plan, I've got me, me top bearing in, I've got my bottom bearing in, I'll now fit the spindle into those bearings. Yep, can't see through camera. Everything works opposite when you're looking at camera for some reason. So that fits into my bearings like so. So now I can, that's coming through my top bearing, I can put a thrust washer on the top. I can put a locking washer on just for double security. Like so. And then I've got my 2B nylock nut here, and I'm just going to start that off camera. Right, I've got that nut started now, as you can see on top of there. So what we're going to do now is just take this, this play out of this spindle. We don't want this nut too tight, but we just want it tight enough to remove play without nipping it. Like so. That's it. Right then, next. Okay then, so next job is to sort this motor out. Right, I've got a little sketch here which I'll just show you first. first. Now this motor is a Johnson motor and uh, there's a faint number on it and I'm sure it's 365 but I can't swear by that. Um, so I've made a sketch of the motor just to show it dimensions then you could double check if you if you decide to make one of these so these are dimensions that's the diameter and the shaft on the end is 1 8 or 3.2 mil equivalent now I've got to do a slight modification to this motor I've got to put a flat on the shaft and then positioning it onto this so I can line, a, line up with my spindle for that 10BA hole to mark it just to put a little hole for the grub screw to locate in. So that's what I'm going to do next. Right, so here's the motor then. And we're going to locate it into the top housing. Then through this access hole, and I know you're not going to see this because... A, I can't get the camera close enough, and B, I can't, uh, there's not enough room for me to work. So, I'm go where that hole is on that flat that I've filed on my motor, I'm going to scribe a little mark so I know where to drill the little hole to accept the grub screw. So, I'm going to do that off camera. Right then, I've managed to mark that hole. And as you can see on my motor now, I've put a flat on and I've drilled a little hole to accept that 10 ba screw. And I've probably gone in halfway through the shaft. You've got to be careful with that because it's only a small diameter shaft. But now that should be enough to connect the spindle to the motor. So that's what we're going to do next. So like I said before, this access hole is very limiting for me to show you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to line the hole of the spindle up. I think you might just see that. There's the spindle hole, 10 ba And I'm going to line this motor up now with that hole. 
and now I'm going to put that 10 BA grub screw through that access hole. You'll not be able to see me do that though because it's just impossible to get camera angle, lighting and me with a screwdriver in hole. But what I will show you, how small a 10 BA screw is. And I've got a magnetic screwdriver here and I don't know if you can see that, it's a really tiny screw. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through all that access hole into that 10 b hole in the spindle and put this grub screw in then that connects the motor to the spindle so I'll do that off camera ok then so we're all connected up now motor fitted, bearing housings fitted uh, spindle fitted so I'm going to call it a day for this part now and we'll complete it probably in part 3 but what I'm, I'm just going to put this chuck on to show you proportions so I'll just screw this chuck on and then you can have a have a look at these proportions and I think it looks pretty well in proportion to say it once was a microscope I've just got to get a spanner on that because the spindle's turning just let me find a spanner yeah you just have to hold the spindle with a spanner and then that tightens your chuck up like so so that's where we're up to at the moment then um, so I'll continue with this in part 3 uh, I've had enough for today I think um, anyway if you've not seen my other videos and you're interested take a look at them and uh, if you subscribe I think it reminds you that uh, I'll be putting part three up. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you on my next, next part, part three. Bye for now then.